Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, I am completely and utterly prepared to mentally exhaust myself to the point where I can't put together a coherent sentence due to all of my excitement because today we finally get to do a retrospective on the Ninja Turtle games starting off with the ones that came out in 2003. This series is so near and dear to my heart. I don't know how I can begin to put it into words. I literally grew up on the Ninja Turtles. I have played every single Ninja Turtle game that you can think of and that's why I'm excited to look back on these games because they all mean so much to me. But what I'm excited about is that there is an era of Ninja Turtle games I did miss out on. And that's why we're gathering here to celebrate because this week the Cowabunga Collection comes out. 12 TMNT games, all old school. Games like this here, Tournament Fighter. Games like this, the classic TMNT Turtles in Time are coming out all on one disc, one collection, good price. And a lot of those games I haven't played. So I'm really excited to get my hands on them and try them out. So to celebrate, I've got, oh, the big daddy stack of TMNT games to talk about. So let's not delay any further because this is going to be a long one. I'm going to have a lot to say. So if you're new here, you're into retrospectives, nostalgia content, consider subscribing. With that, let's begin. So here we got the two cartridges for Turtles in Time and Tournament Fighters. Like I said, I'm not going to be talking about those, but wanted to show them off anyway to really set the nostalgia in. Don't have those SNES games complete in boxes. I don't know where I'd even put them in the first place. What I want to begin with is a game that took a lot of elements from this one here, Turtles in Time, and brought it into the 3D space. Yes, we're talking about just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is the 2003 animated series, one of my favorite TV shows of all time, by the way. Yeah, biased, but I just need to throw it out there as a side note. If you ever have the opportunity to watch this show, please do. It's emotional, it's serious, the design of the Turtles is the best it ever was. They have yet to top it. I do like the IDW comic look, don't get me wrong, but this was the best rendition of the Turtles, I feel. Leo is the leader, Donnie with the smarts, Mikey with the jokes, Raph with the hothead, but their chemistry, the voice work, it's just, there's nothing quite like it. I yearn for these days so much, but let's talk about the game. So the back, we got Shredder here. It says, prepare for ninja kick butt fighting as you face the Shredder trademark and his vile pack of foot ninjas. I always loved how this is like an angle, like a turtle shell. Team up in the story mode for a single or two player cooperative game. And I like how they're showing the versus mode here, even though it's not co-op there. It says, kick some ninja butt with cool combos and special attacks and go head to head in the versus mode where they're showing co-op here. So I don't know how they mixed that one up, but anyway, opening it up, you get treated to a beautiful disc art. Yes, again, I may be biased. And then a wonderful manual, the most colorful one of the bunch we have here. It's all orange, very uncommon color to be associated with the Ninja Turtles, uh, very artistic. This was a 3D beat-em-up, so there's not much to be said here about the manual. It's just telling you about controls, how you jump, and that you can actually do two-player tag attacks together, which is awesome. Your Gembu turtle power. So there are some hidden mechanics the game doesn't tell you about. It literally throws you right in there. So this is one of the rare moments where... I do think the manual may be useful to you if you so desire, but there's not much to be said outside of a couple bios here for the turtles. I just love the amount of color they splash into it. They explain all the power-ups that you can get. And then on the back, it's got the action figures. And my God, do I still have the action figures from the O3 series for days, for days. They're probably worth a lot now. I would hope so at least because they are wonderful. Anyway, this game here... I have nothing but fantastic things to say about because you all know I speak very highly of Turtles in Time. Turtles in Time is a generation-defining beat-em-up game. It's one of the most popular beat-em-up games to ever be released. It's so good that out in my hallway here at the studio, yes, I literally have the arcade cabinet dedicated to the 89 arcade game as well as Turtles in Time. And I got it because of Turtles in Time so I could have it forever immortalized because at that point it was either the cartridge that arcade cabinet, but there was no Cowabunga collection. Anyway, the reason why I bring up Turtles in Time is, to me, it was such a beautiful transition taking the Turtles in Time mindset and bringing it into a 3D space. Not only that, but we get a nice cel-shaded art style here in TMNT that I think 
lends itself really well to the player because going back to it, this game still looks fantastic. It looks sharp, man. Especially on CRT, this looks beautiful. One of the better looking games for its time. It's why I'm hoping that Konami, as you see here on the art, they did publish these games as well, manages to work something out where they can also republish these games because they had their hand in a lot of them and make a second Cowabunga collection, perhaps. That would send me over the moon. Now, this game, what I love about it is each turtle you play as has a different path through the same stages. So you'll still go through, you know, New York City, the sewers, Shredder's base, so on and so forth. But each turtle has different boss fights in different parts of the game. And once you complete them all, I think it's Leonardo gets a secret seventh stage that you can unlock. So to me, it was taking that beat em up DNA from Turtles in Time, evolving it into a 3D space, and then building its own style around it. I just love the sound effects. Like when you hit someone really hard, it says like thwack. A lot of personality, a lot of art driven into this game. And it's covering mostly the first season of TMNT, which is a great season, by the way. So that's TMNT from 2003. And Konami did back to back to back game releases. So the second one, I don't feel as passionate about. We're looking at TMNT 2 Battle Nexus. I gotta say though, if I do feel passionate about anything, it's this box art going hard. You see Shredder in the background. The turtles look really angry here. Foot Tower in the background. Foot Ninjas and Triceratops in the bottom right. On the back it says, play with up to four players. So before I get any further, one of my critiques as a little kid with this game when I got it for Christmas was that I wish it let you play as all four turtles at once where you could swap between them. Why do I have to go through all the stages as one? Or if I had a friend to play with, only two of us can play? Like this should be a four player game. It's the turtles, right? So this game kicks it up a notch. It says you can play as all four turtles. We'll get into that. Specialized moves for each turtle, four player shell action, a big improvement there. Cooperative play and head to head, four player competition, and then unlock a blast from the past to the original TMNT arcade game. Venture with the turtles to shell and back in TMNT 2 Battle Nexus. Pick up the action on a strange new planet with mysterious new technology. Two tail kicking modes delivered green knuckled action, including story and battle nexus modes. Now, the blast from the past with the arcade is awesome because for myself and many others in my generation, that was my introduction to the arcade mode. I then bought it on the Xbox Live Arcade, and it's still on my old 360 hard drive, and it's also in the arcade cabinet out in the back of my office. Anyway, let's keep going here. We've got the complete box experience. The manual here, I don't remember it being too colorful. Yeah, it's got the yin and yang on the top and bottom as sort of banners. Um, it's got colored images. This is about as colorless as a colored manual can get, if, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but uh, it goes through the tournament game mode it's got, which was pretty cool. Um, it's where you could get a lot of loot because this game was like oddly driven by like the crystals you could find on the ground. It had a ton of combos, as you'll see here. This game was, I think, very combo driven, maybe to its own fault. Uh, character bios here. And I believe there was a toy ad in here because I saw a little bit of color somewhere. Here we are. Experience the big brawl in video and DVD, TMNT, Battle Nexus, and it goes over some of the movies, some of the seasons that you can get, which was awesome. And then a King Arthur promo on the back. So remember what I said with this game when it came to four players. What I really wanted was to be able to play with everyone at once. And so what you have is one turtle and you could swap between a party of four. So you could play as Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, Leonardo, or as you progressed deeper into the game, you could unlock Master Splinter, you could unlock Casey Jones, you could unlock Karai, and each character would have their own alternative. So Karai was Leonardo's alternative and so on and so forth, because I'm forgetting the fourth alternative. And what you could do is build these parties and go around these levels and play as these four characters, but not all at once. So they were like almost there. And if you played Mutant Nightmare, you know they finally achieved it all. But this game, why am I not too in love with it? Let me start off with the positive. What a content rich TMNT game. The amount of levels you can go through in this game is truly staggering. I mean, they cover so deeply every episode. Not only that, but they use the little shots from the actual animated series and some of their own cutscenes. So it's a nice blending of the two. So it doesn't feel too much like one for one. They're just taking clips from the animated series and slapping them in between a lot of the episodes you'll be going through here in the game because that's what they call them, that levels episodes. 
and they're defined with episodes within X. Um, fortunately, they don't do that too often, but it wasn't until Mutant Nightmare that they went all in on just like full on cutscenes. But again, with the games coming out year after year after year, this is where things start to trip up. They overhauled the combat system in this game. I don't know what they were thinking, like going back and playing it for this video. I thought the same thing. I was like, what were they, what were they doing? Uh, they made the combat go from like silky smooth, beat em up, action feels really good to janky, stiff, very limited and downright frustrating enemy design. You'll have characters that will like poison you, knock you to sleep and you'll just sit there going, oh, like that until they hit you. The knockback amount in this game is unreal. So the amount of times like the turtles will get hit and be put on their back. And when they do, they just lay there. Very frustrating game to play. But I, I want to love it because again, there's so much content there. It's just the camera angles, the platforming. None of it is that great. So it wasn't looking good for the turtles here with Battle Nexus, in my opinion. Still appreciate the game for what it did. And again, its amount of content is amazing. But it wasn't until we got my favorite. TMNT 3 Mutant Nightmare that our prayers were answered. A little bit of a different energy here, right? You see the turtles from the show in the first one. You see a kind of more artistic rendition, very similar to the IDW comic look here in Battle Nexus. And then with Mutant Nightmare, you get kind of these CG models for the turtles. So they were really experimenting. And it says, mutate your turtles as you play. Earn experience points. Develop the ultimate turtle, where you can see the ultimate mode, this kind of dino ninja turtle look to them all new target attack system and unlock turtles in time that last one there set me up the wall with hype as a kid because i played this game a lot at my friend's house and i never owned it now i finally could in my own weird way in their latest adventure the turtles are ready to work as a team with four player and single player modes the turtles are always watching each other's back and looking for action and you can see here, like, they look wild. I remember getting the back of this box art from my grandma at Christmas again. This was a big Christmas game for me, clearly. And going, what is this? This looks amazing. And finally unlocking them through the scrolls that you find in levels. Amazing stuff, man. All right, so again, complete in-box experience here. This one, unfortunately, black and white. And it's wild to me because this was like the most dense game right next to Battle Nexus, but this one also had the most ambition and overhauls. One thing I do respect is even if I didn't like something such as Battle Nexus as much, at least I can say from TMNT 1 to 2 to 3, they overhauled the game each time around. However, I have to say that TMNT 3 Mutant Nightmare was the best overhaul of them all. So as you can see, the manual, not doing much for me personally. That's okay though. The game is absolute greatness. And mind you, these three games here have gone up in price. So if you can get a good deal on them, be sure to spring on it because they're only going to go up. PS2 version's a little cheaper, plays the same. GameCube version because it's GameCube, way more expensive for whatever reason. Anyway, TMNT 3 Mutant Nightmare. Oh my God. Okay. So take the amount of content that Battle Nexus has, slice it down a little bit, add more CG cutscenes, add the fact that all four turtles are here now. It's not like Battle Nexus where you can swap between them. It's not like TMNT 1 where you have to, you know, use just one at a time. Four of them are here controlled by AI. You pick the one you want to play as. As you go around the level, you're going to beat up enemies like the back of the box mentioned. You're going to get XP points to these crystals that you find that they drop. When you do that, you can spend it on skills, on combos, and you can also loot on the ground in Ninja Scrolls. These Ninja Scrolls are going to give you tons of moves, tons of passive buffs, and eventually you'll unlock that Dino Turtle mode I was talking about here on the back. At least that's what I called it. I don't remember what they called it in game, but that to me was the moment the game felt much more balanced compared to battle nexus but it didn't feel as easy mode as the tmnt beat em up from 2003 but yet at the same time there were like combo attacks where you could like do a fire spiral as Raphael, or you could shoot out tornadoes with michelangelo there was just so much style and personality to this game like the 2003 counterpart while taking the content and customization you would get inside battle nexus and bringing it all here into one 
perfect hybrid because Battle Nexus did have progression. You could go in, you could get new skills, new combos, but they didn't take it as far as Mutant Nightmare did. So Mutant Nightmare has like the best air of the turtles. It's got the gameplay. It's got the progression. Y'all know how I feel about progression. And so that is the trifecta of what I think is like the best available Ninja Turtle games to this day. I love all three of these games for their different reasons. Battle Nexus being my least favorite, but man, if you have not played any of these, I highly recommend it if you love your Ninja Turtles. There was still one more game from the 03 Ninja Turtle era before they did move on. That was Mutant Melee. As you can see here, we have all manner of characters. The Ninja Turtles on the top, Shredder, Hun, Casey Jones, Foot Ninja. On the back, it says, Run with the Turtles as they trash, smash, and bash their way to victory in the ultimate four-player Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles action game with over 20 playable characters. You see April there, Splinter is there, a lot of little things there. You got Hun from when he was younger, unpredictable obstacles around every corner. Corner, melee and adventure mode so like fighting story mode and then a wide range of mini games including last man standing king of the hill and more those were particularly fun i remember those now opening it up here the manual again black and white not sure what happened after tmnt1 a little bit of disappointment there but they go on to provide very lengthy explanations for what is a simple 3d fighting game now, for me personally, I would have just taken TMNT 4, but everyone loves to make trilogies. No fourth entries in their game series. No one's like Trails out there, Legends of Heroes Trail series, where they can go really gung-ho with things. But anyway, this one, less to say about, not because it's bad, but because it's a 3D fighting game. You get put in an arena. There's a lot of pickups. It reminds me of, there was a game called, I think, looney tunes oh my god looney tunes like lights camera action or something like that and it was this 3d arena fighting game not 3d fighting game like you think with anime fighting but you're within a boxed map and there's tons of like obstacles and and power-ups and items dropping in that you can use and you want to use them all to your advantage because this game is not like the best technical fighter in fact it can get very frustrating but there is some cool inter environment interactivity like you can jump off walls and really like bounce around do some cool moves it does feel good when you get into the rhythm uh, but overall not my favorite i like how in the adventure mode you can pick your path as you're on the map to me that was really awesome but all in all mutant melee uh it is one that you can only play in 360 back compat so I think it's only available on Xbox, if I remember correctly. It doesn't have the stamp here, but I don't remember seeing this on other consoles, but don't take my word for it. This was one that I got very late in its life cycle, so I didn't play it around launch, so I wasn't all up in that zeitgeist. Then we move on to the next era of Ninja Turtles. So here's where the 03 era ends and where my happiness ends as well, and we move on to TMNT 2007. God almighty, if there's a game that I can't stand, it's this one. Okay, let's get into it. So Ubisoft publishes this one for the movie that came out that year. Over the top ninja action. Play the TMNT characters, each with a unique fighting style. Unite the turtles. Save the city. Scale buildings. Leap from rooftops. Yeah, okay, give me a break. And use tag team moves to crush powerful enemies. Okay, cracking it open here. As you can tell, I'm in a hurry because I got to talk about this game. Black and white. It does go over a lot of the acrobatics here, which was a pretty key component of the game. It makes it sound more free and open, like ledge grabs, safety rolls, shadow warping. It's not as open as it sounds, though. Trust me. They have the Playmates Ninja Turtle figures here. These ones were also pretty cool back then. I have to concede that. I did love the movie, by the way. I thought the movie was really good. I loved the fight between Leo and Raph. That's still one that you should just go on and look up on its own. They didn't have as deep of write-ups as they did in the other TMNT manuals. You'll see here just like bullet points for each of them. And honestly, it looks like they're using the action figures for the poses, not even the character models. But anyway, what's your problem with this game, Maddie? What's wrong with you? Maybe for a lot of you out there who are younger, you grew up on this game and I'm attacking your childhood. And for that, I do not apologize at all. I remember buying this game on the PSP and playing it and beating it in three hours. And when I got to the end of the game, I thought there would be, because when you're beating the game and going through all the missions, it's on a mission map, at least in the PSP version. And I remember getting to the final level and going, well, certainly there's more. There's got to be a second map or something like that. Beating it, no end game content, no unlockables, no fun challenges. I get pissed off thinking about it. 
just a three hour, four hour tops cash grab. And not only that, but when you look at this era of games where they were beat em ups, you didn't have much to top here in all honesty, right? This game is one of the biggest auto fighters I have ever played, especially when you're on the Nightcrawler stage, or what is his name again? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta pop open the manual for this. Refresh my Ninja Turtle lore. Because I just saw his name here. I want to get it right so no one comes at me. Night Watcher, not Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is a guy from X-Men. Night Watcher. When you're playing as Night Watcher and you're holding the B button, he just teleports, as you'll see in the gameplay, he'll teleport from enemy to enemy, and you just wipe him out, and you get the maximum amount of stars for every combat encounter. I do like that the camera twists and jerks around a little bit with each attack. It could have had more impact, but they just didn't go all the way with this one. Even in the 360 version, this game was just weak. And then, the audio. Oh, my lord. Oh, the audio. Oh. Each of the turtles has to have these one-liners that they say when they're exploring the levels. So, Leonardo's, I kid you not, is, mm -mm -mm, yeah, like that. That's all he does. So, you'll be running around, and he'll just go, yeah, yeah, yeah over and over and over. He'll be mid-dialogue saying, uh, Master Splinter, I think, yeah, and he just keeps going. I just, I can't wrap my head around why people like this game. I really can't. I think it's one of the worst games ever made, yeah. quite frankly. Now, Ubisoft, that was not the end of them and Ninja Turtles. They also made TMNT Smash Up. And as you can see here, it's that 07 era again, based off the art. But it says bonus limited edition comic book inside, which I do have for this copy. I do recommend get the Wii version. Don't be like me and get the PS2 version. Wii version has extra characters, extra stages, so don't do what I do. Anyway, the back says pick your battles. Choose from a variety of characters to create limitless numbers of matchups. Prepare for an all-out brawl. Lifelike stages, destructible environments, and surprises around every corner. Arcade mode features a comic storyline co-written by TMNT co-creator Peter Laird. And fight in a variety of tournament modes with friends at home or online. Then popping it open. Here in the back, we do have the Smash Up comic book. And it's got that black and white look and feel, which I do appreciate, quite honestly. I'm happy that they took this route, strictly because, you know, with Laird in on the project, you know, it's got that old look and feel to it, even in the game's cutscenes. It would be weird if these were colored, but the game's cutscenes weren't. So it's cool that this even comes with it. You can check it out for yourself. And then the manual, well, when you get a game coming with a comic book, I'm not going to judge the manual too hard, especially when this game, as we will now document, is... A Smash clone for Ninja Turtles. And I gotta say, it's a pretty good one. So let's talk about it. So TMNT Smash Up comes out around the time that Super Smash Bros. Brawl came out. And Ubisoft, being as savvy as they were, understanding what they had, low-key were one of the better publishers for the TMNT license, went out to the Smash Bros. Brawl team and said, can you do the same thing but with the Ninja Turtles? And they did just that. Is it as smooth as Smash games? Not really. But it still feels good. It's still a lot of fun comboing. And also what's great is they took the visual design of the TMNT characters from the 07 series, but they the, the absolute madmen got the 03 voice actors back for this game. And I was like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. The nice hybrid, the great gameplay. A lot of people crank on the story. IGN in particular, I remember watching their review, really went ham on the story in this game, saying it was lazy. To me, it was a callback to the comic book era that defined the Ninja Turtles. I love it. It's a quick story. You're done in like an hour, not even. It's a very, very fast-paced story, and it's over. You're here for the endless fights with your friends on the couch, and that's what it's all about. If you're into Smash, you're into Ninja Turtles, you owe it to yourself to give Smash Up a try. It's not as good as Smash. It's a pretty good Smash clone, though, and I think you would like it if you gave it a chance. So, then, moving on, let's bring up TMNT Turtles in Time again. So, we're not talking about the original, but Ubisoft did make TMNT Turtles in Time reshelled. They remade the Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time game for the Xbox Live Arcade, for PSN, and it's not available for sale anymore. But if you're like me and you have it on your Xbox 360 hard drive, the one that you'll never get rid of, then you're safe. So this was literally the game from top to bottom, same exact game that you played way back when, just remade, different art style, a lot of people didn't like it. I was just thrilled to have this game back again because once again, didn't have a lot of money growing up. So 
Didn't have the cartridge, didn't have an SNES, but you bet your butt I was on top of that. I was on top of Mutant Nightmare to make sure I had it in my own special way. So that was just a brief pit stop for Ubisoft. I want to make sure I highlighted that. But then we move into what was their last game, TMNT Arcade Attack. Very perplexing style of Ninja Turtles here. I don't get why we just can't settle on one design here, but they're constantly being redesigned. Classic Turtles, all new adventure. Go head to head in your favorite all time boss fights, featuring a classic comic book inspired story. So Ubisoft is big on this comic book story stuff. And it says, team up with a friend in jump, kick, and flip in online co-op battles. Cracking it open. Yep, this is a Nintendo DS game, as you already saw. The manual itself, very text-heavy. Very little imagery involved here, just combo attacks, because it's a very simple game. You run around 3D spaces, not quite to the level of 3D like Team NT03, but 3D in the sense of, like, you know, you could run a circle if you wanted to, and you fight enemies. The levels are really long, which I think is a problem with this game because at least in TMNT 03, you could finish levels in a couple of minutes, which is why, again, I say it was kind of like Turtles in Time. You could burst through levels in that game in like 10 minutes tops. But Arcade Attack, I do like. For a DS game, uh, it's a little expensive now, 40 bucks. Be aware of that. Not something I think you need to like rush out and get. But I do like its arcade inspirations. I do like that, you know, Ubisoft understood the beat em up nature of the game like they did a smash bros clone which i thought was kind of inventive they did a beat em up style game and then they did more of like a 3d adventure game if you will in the name of the tmnt movie adaptation so i think ubisoft did a pretty good job with the license all things considered it's just that they didn't really hit a home run to me and in fact they made a, a big stinker but i know not everyone's gonna agree with that but no one disrespected tmnt more than Activision. There was one glimmer of hope that we will talk about, but otherwise, Activision just did my boys dirty. You want to talk about a game that's worse than 07? It's this one right here. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from Nickelodeon. Stop the evil uprising. Play as your favorite turtles. Buyakasha. Battle through 15 action-packed levels. God bless if you get two levels deep. I don't know how you did it. Four-player co-op multiplayer for total turtle power. You get a promotion here on the inside for the animated adventure series. The disc is here. Throw it in the trash. Burn it with fire. I don't care. This game is a joke. Okay. Y'all know I focus on positivity here. I cannot brighten up this turn because... This, the audio. Let's let the gameplay speak for itself for once. I talk so much. Why don't we take like just 15 seconds so you can hear the punching, the voice quality. Listen to some of the voice acting and how loud and scratchy it is compared to the rest of the game. Like, I'm just going to let it do its thing for 20, 30 seconds. We'll let Locke decide. And we're going to move on. I'm going to keep it that brief for you. Oh, uh, yeah. Ninja time. I was thinking we need a name for our team. You know, like... The awesome squad. I got it. Team butt kick. Or team face smash. Yeah. Ow. Ugh. All right. Moving on to a more positive look at things. In 2014 came TMNT Danger of the Ooze. Now, this case is very damaged because, uh, yes, this is my GameStop copy, you may recall. The back says, stop Shredder from unleashing the power of the super mutagen. Play as your favorite turtles and switch between them on the fly. Battle new enemies from the TV show. No manual, just the disc, which looks like something from SpongeBob, quite honestly, at a quick glance. But I digress. This game is actually kind of good. I was surprised by the turnaround here. I am very ignorant when it comes to the 2012 series. I just do not like the turtle design. I don't like... Some of the voice choice, like having Paulson back is awesome, but otherwise, I just can't get behind how they look, man. Like this Nickelodeon era of Turtles does kill my soul a little bit. I do need to give them a fair shake because a lot of people say they're good, but I just think that 2003, like that mature era of Turtles, I think we forget with the comics and that era, like they were serious. They were not always goofy, just going on fun, loving adventures. Like they bled, they cried together. Like this stuff was serious, man, but they made it for kids. So anyway... Old man yells at Cloud moment out of the way. Secret of the, or Danger to the Ooze was a game that was a Metroidvania. I was very surprised by this. And you'll get little upgrades as you go along that let you go back and explore parts of the level. It's not a great Metroidvania, but it's not TMNT 2012 status. Like, it, it is at least 
tolerable to play. But I gotta, I gotta tip my cap to them. This was an idea I never thought would occur, uh, but it's one that makes sense. And I'd love to see like another crack at this, like Samus Return style stuff. Um, maybe on a handheld device, like a Switch exclusive game here. That would be really cool. Uh, it really opened my mind to some potential. So I love the experimentation here. It was a great bounce back effort. Not in a wonderful game. Uh, definitely has its clear apparent flaws in the combat, in the exploration, in the kind of flow of the game. But it, it overall was a good attempt. I did like it and it introduced a new idea. Because one thing that TMNT suffers from is they just love their beat-em-ups, man. And I love beat-em-ups too, but I always have been a big believer that Ninja Turtles could be more than that. And guess what? Someone else agreed. Don't have the physical copy in front of me because the physical copy never existed. One last Xbox Live Arcade game for the Ninja Turtles. Out of the shadows. One of the worst reviewed games ever in the 360 PS3 generation. It got twos. It got threes. And guess what? I'm going to keep it real with y'all. Y'all heard me call a couple of these games in this stack the worst of all time. I don't get the slander for this game. I will repeat it again. I do not get it. This game was the attempt to bring Ninja Turtles and the Arkham style combat together. Four turtles on the screen together, duking it out. Combo moves, free flow combat. Did it have jank? Was it slow? My God, yes. But the ideas were there. A lot of the execution was there. They just needed more time to fine tune. But to give this game twos and threes, fours, blows my mind because they had a full story. They had new combat. It was in a 3D space, like everything I had been asking for. And then you beat it. You unlock the arcade mode. It turns it into a side scroller. You start to bounce off the walls and interact with the environment more. I mean, this game was way better than it was given credit for. I am still a staunch defender of TMNT Out of the Shadows. I think that that Activision really screwed the pooch. They should have given the game more time. But to the people who gave it twos to fours, God, check yourself. It's like the people who gave SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated a 2.5 out of 10 over at GameStop. Or at GameSpot, I'm sorry. I don't like both, clearly. <laughs> but I checked that and I'm like, what is our what is our standard nowadays? And especially back then, I just think it was the wild west of game reviews because this game's not great, but to give it a, a two or a four, it works. You save those scores for games that do not work. There's a difference between jank and a game being absolutely broken. So I just got to shout that one out. It's one in the timeline that I am very passionate about. And that brings us to one final Ninja Turtles game. That game is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutants in Manhattan, one of the few games that wasn't in my collection when preparing for this video. And I'll talk about why. Save Manhattan from the shredder, shell up to the challenge, big boss battles, make it a party with four player online co-op, platinum games, man, platinum games. Ah! Okay, TMNT, Out of the Shadows. Uh, now you know why Activision made that game to connect it to the movie. It's a promo for that. Pre-order the Blu-ray and digital HD June 3rd. Again, with the turtle recreations. I don't know what was going on here. But guess who got the turtles right in the terms of visuals here? This game did. Took straight from the IDW comic book series. And the visuals are one of the strongest parts of this game. Much like what I said about the 2003 counterpart, the cell shaded art style of TMNT, Mutants in Manhattan, really lends itself to the overall product. Like, it really builds things up. It makes you want to explore, be a part of this world. And I gotta say, the opening four levels of this game are great. You're like, okay, we got the speed and action of a platinum game, the art style of IDW, we got a good flow here where it's not just... 3D beat em up, like we have skills, we have progression, we're getting these scrolls. Okay, I see a little bit of mutant nightmare in this game. Then you get past level five. Environments start to repeat themselves. Spongy enemies show up everywhere. You start dying left, right, and center. It becomes one of the most unbalanced games. And then by the time you get to the end of the game, you want to pull your hair out. How do I know that? I've beat this game four times. I don't want to hear from anyone that this game has a redeeming quality because I have searched top to bottom. I have found none. The results are in no redeeming qualities in Mutants of Manhattan because this one is unacceptable. 
Why is that? Because, you know, I just defended Out of the Shadows, right? You're probably a little confused. Like, why would you defend something like Out of the Shadows, which was regarded as trash, but something like Mutants of Manhattan, which does have redeemable quality, as I put in quotes, is something that is irredeemable in your eyes. Okay. Platinum Games is one of my favorite developers on the planet, right? They went through a stretch with Activision where Activision practically almost killed them, where they made the Korra game, they made Mutants of Manhattan, but they have also made Bayonetta. They made one of my Switch favorites in Astral Chain. They are a phenomenal developer when they're on their A game. But they have an A, B, and C team, and the C team was said to be put on these games, and does it ever show? There is no reason why Platinum, a master of the silky smooth combat, should not have hit a home run here. This game, man, if it were just balanced better, I played it on easy, it's just unsatisfying. I played it on normal, I get my ass kicked at the end of the game because it's so poorly mathed out. Then you go up to hard, very hard, because that's how you get the better loot, to scale up your character. But the game is just insufferable because of the damage balancing. But the boss fights, the music, especially the final boss fight against Shredder, that music that plays, I'm like, oh my god, like... They just have these moments of brilliance where I, I see so much potential in the product. And you can go look it up on the Mr. Maddie channel. I geeked out over this game. I did a trailer breakdown. I rarely do trailer breakdowns. That's like exclusively for I am so excited for your game that I just needed to talk about it type energy, which doesn't come around often. This game should have killed it, and it didn't. So this one really breaks my heart, but I want to love Mutants of Manhattan so many times. Again, four times. That's the denial in my heart. Four times I've tried to beat it and love it, and I've beat it every single time, and I still just can't like it. And the last game that I want to remember is, of course, TMNT Shredder's Revenge, the most recent one to come out. A nice strong return to form. I don't need to go on about this one too much because it's very recent. We made a review of it here on the channel because it really fit the vibe. This was a day one game pass game, an absolute home run, up to six players in co-op, a return to the formula of the 16-bit beat-em-up. Absolutely beautiful art in the background. No part of the background in the environment is the same as the other. Just consistent treats for your eyeballs. Wonderful combat, decent progression, a banging soundtrack, nice replayability, unlockable characters. This is what it's all about. It doesn't have to only be this way, though. Like I said in the review of that game, it's time for TMNT to get another 3D game. Out of the Shadows should not be the last attempt at that. This series deserves more, and it damn well better get more because it's getting popular again. We're seeing these weird attempts at, you know, Rise of the Ninja Turtles. Like, just read the comics. Don't try to reinvent the formula in the sense of what they look like, their quirks, their personality. They work. Just all I can say to anyone who's ever worked in TMNT is it's this simple. Take it seriously. They're not always joking around. They're not. They could be so much more, but... Anyway, that is all the Ninja Turtle games since 2003 that I wanted to talk about. So with that, I leave it in your hands. I've certainly gabbed enough. What do you think about this era of the Ninja Turtles? I am certainly looking forward to seeing your response down below. Thank you so much to those of you who sat with me in this video. And I'll catch all of you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.